Well, hello and welcome to my podcast. This is Cinemin, the podcast for the fans of the Criterion Collection, international films, art films, and of course, American classics. Please enjoy my channel. Hello, folks. I'm Daniel Nobri. And we're gonna talk about a mystery this time. Cinemin is gonna introduce a review and a preview of the new Criterion Collection, spy number 1020, for Leave Her to Heaven. This is star, the movie stars Cornell Wilde and, of course, Jim Tierney, and it's from 1945, directed by John M. Stahl. It's a great film, it's a great, it's a mis, kind of mixture between um, film noir and also a drama, melodrama. Beautiful cinematography in color that won the Academy Award in 1945 and also Jim Tierney, first and only nomination as Best Actress. Okay, stick around. We're gonna be going home now and we're gonna show you more about the movie. Please, Daddy, sit still. How do you expect I can't help it? It tickles. And then this is Jim Tierney and actor Dario Hickman on the famous lake scene that is also the cover from the Criterion Collection, Blu-ray and DVD, Spine 1020 from the movie Lead Her to Have on Direct Regiment, John M. Stahl. Okay, this is the main scene, I'm not gonna show you the whole scene. This is just a teaser. Look how beautiful Jean Tierney is in this film. He is her particular favorite. He's still alive, Daryl Hickman is still alive. And there, she of course just put some sunscreen on him. He's about to swim in the lake. And this is one of the most, the high points of this film, which I'm gonna stop right now, go around and gonna start doing the review for this film. Okay, so stick around. There's more from Leave Her to Heaven, 1945. And here we are. Now we're gonna start talking about a fabulous American, absolutely classic from 1945, Leave Her to Heaven, directed by John M. Stahl. Just to give some credits about the director, uh, Mr. Stahl also directed Imitation of Life in 1934, the one, no, there is a second movie made, The Imitation of Life, uh, with Douglas Sirk, with Lana Turner, but this one is the one we call that Colbert in 1934. Then the same Douglas Sirk will redo another movie from John A. Stahl, which is Magnificent Obsession that Stahl directed in 1935. And there is another movie that I like very much from him called The Keys of, Kingdom, of the Kingdom with Gregory Peck. It's a good film. It's a good film directed by him. Now, rumor has it that he was not really great with the actors. He was a little bit demanding and no, that is, you see in there, this is my uh, copy of my Blu-ray, I'm sorry, my DVD from the Fox Collection. But this is the Blu-ray print from the Criterion Collection right here that I'm playing for you. So this is the latest from the Criterion Collection uh, film, which is the print is so much better. What, but however, there is one feature in, in my DVD that I like very much, is the commentary by Daryl Hickman, him, he's still alive, and uh, uh, Richard Schuchel, the movie critic that also I love his commentary, his commentaries on my movies. I have several of them that I learned a lot from Mr. Schuchel. Now, as for the screenplay of this film, which is pretty much, pretty much well done, is by John Swerling, uh, based on a novel by Ben Ames Williams. Of course, starring Jim Turner, Cornell Wilde, uh, Jim Crane, Vincent Price co-starring. The cinematography of this film is from Academy Award winner uh, Leon Shamroy that was nominated. This guy was nominated uh, 18 times for cinematography. 18 times. He won four Oscars. Uh, he shares those records with different cinematographers with 18 nominations. There's another cinematographer that has the same number of uh, nominations, but he got more Oscars. He got four, and there's another cinematographer that won four Academy Awards for his cinematography. Now, Shamroy was specialized in Technicolor, okay? 
And the movie also was nominated for Best Actress Jim Cherney, uh, Best Art Direction, Interior De Decoration in Color, and Best Sound Recording. The music on the film is by the great Alfred Newman. So with all those credits, there's no much to go wrong. And especially because the screenplay, in my opinion, is pretty tight. There's certain things, perhaps, it comes to a question, you know, back then, because the, the way the romance unfolds between the two main actors, which is Cornel Wilde and her, they meet in a train. She starts talking about, he, he, she's reading a book by, wrote by the character played by Cornel Wilde. He's a writer. And he, uh, the book falls, she fell asleep, the book falls on the floor. She, he catches the book and gives to her and she starts immediately staring at him. But you imagine at the beginning, maybe because he's the author of the book that she's reading, he actually is not. She's staring at him, and she tells him because he really looks like her father. Now, that kind of aspect, the psychological aspect of that will play a role during the entire movie, basically. Because it becomes her love for him will become more and more obsessive. She doesn't want to share him with anybody else's. I'm not talking about the father, I'm talking about Cornel Wilde, the character, okay? She marries him in there after. The father is already dead. Now, she's seeing a doctor here in this part of the movie, which she, Jean Tierney in real life went to see a doctor because uh, she really suffered from mental illness that back then they didn't know the, the diagnosis. And she, there is an interview on YouTube that I recommend from 1970, 75, when she, after a while in shock treatment, real shock treatment, because her mother was thinking the best medicine was giving her some shock treatments, uh, affect her behavior a lot. Because in the commentary by Daryl Hickman, he says she's always, during the, the movie, she always by herself, aloof, she didn't participate enough in the rest of the cast after they shoot a scene or anything like that. She was very cold with Cornel Wilde. They were thinking that they didn't like much each other. But now looking back at her own profile and what she'd been through about her mental illness, I can understand and I feel really sorry for her because she was fascinating and she chose this film one of her best, if not the best. Because Laura, she made a little before, she was very famous for Laura, uh, directed by Otto Preminger in 1944. But in Laura, the movie, the total run is like uh, two hours, and she appears like almost after one hour, 15 minutes, I think, she, she, when you see her for the first time. So she stayed in the movie for one hour. Um, this is more her movie. She's, well, I mean, she makes everything make sense right here because she's the main character of the film. And uh, I guess this is one of the reasons that the film is great. Of course, there's several others. It's an absolutely classic film. Look, I hope you can see, you probably cannot see it, but uh, you should get this film, number one, because it's a great film, great cinematography all over, great, beautiful looking actors. And I, I'm gonna say in defense of Cornel Wilder, he's very good in this film. He's just very good in this film. He, I mean, he makes his part believable. He tried to make his character more light and acceptable. You kind of you can understand that like, he'll fall in love with somebody like beautiful as she was, because she was, look at that. When the scene is there together, look at her. She's like a goddess, you know? And uh, definitely is, is beautiful. It's just gorgeous to look over and over. So I think you should get, if you wanna, I'm getting for my collection, that's for sure. This is a beautiful new print, an upgrade for my DVD right there, and a beautiful one. And um, so just to give more sense, I think I, I covered pretty much everything on this review. Oh, by the way, the Criterion Collection features does not have any commentary, commentary by no one. That was in my DVD. That edition has the commentary that I mentioned before, which gives you some insights, especially from Daryl Hickman. He tells what, what happened his perception of the film, how the, 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 uh, how the director John Ames start, start treating Cornell Wilde, and it was treating him at the beginning of the film, and she comes to the very fa famous scene, one of the most famous scenes in, in the movie history, is the scene by the lake that defines this film. 
It is a, that one that I showed just a little clip before I started making this comment. I don't want to spoil that for you. You should watch that scene in its entirety. And he's very convincing. You know, Daryl Hickman is very convincing. And the, the director started mistreating him. And then after he made the scene, it came a letter from Daryl F. Zanuck praising the kid for the scene. Then Daryl, uh, John M. Stahl started treating him better and tried Cornell Wilde very, very bad. So th that is one thing that Hickman said at the end of the movie, that when they wrap it up everything and uh, Cornell Wilde came, you know, when the director say goodbye for everybody and all that, Cornell Wilde came to the director and just say like this, I won't forget the way you treat me and turn his back and walk away. However, I look in the filmography of Cornell Wilde, he'll work again in the future with um, John M. Stahl. He's gonna work with him. I believe the movie is called The Three of Jericho. I can be wrong on that. Later on, he will do that movie. And Cornell Wilde himself will become a director. He directed like B movies. That is a movie in the Criterion Collection directed by him called Naked Prey. It's a good film. It's a good film, surprisingly good film. I like it very much. It's interesting. He made some B movies, but interesting ones. No, trivial, cheap. He, he, he got some interesting things to show and I like very much. So that's for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini review that I made from this movie. It's like absolutely, you know, if you're a fan of the Criterion Collection, you should get, number one, because it is great. And um, Jim Tierney, fabulous. All cast is very good. Tight screenplay. The scene of the lake is there and is just fun. Enjoyment is a thriller. It's kind of mix thriller, film noir, melodrama for sure, most melodrama than anything, you're gonna see the end when Vincent Price portrays a lawyer at the end, it's great. Well, thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Also, don't forget to put a like in my video, I appreciate. And I see you guys in the next video from Cinemin. I'm Daniel Nobri, thanks for watching.